Hey my loves, moving week has rolled in. On Thursday night, we will be sleeping in the new place. Before the packers start their work, it is very important to take out and put aside everything that you're going to need for the first night and the next day. Here's why. After spending a whole day unloading boxes and hopefully getting them into the right room, you're going to be exhausted. There is no way I want to start unpacking the boxes and searching for things that I need. So what I have learned to do over the years is to get out a checklist and pack a separate box or boxes which contain everything that you might need for the next 24 hours at least. If you are a couple, one small box will probably suffice. But if you are a family, then you might need more. The boxes that I'm using are these Kugis boxes from IKEA. These are honestly my go-to multi-purpose boxes and they are also easy to carry. I have actually brought them to my new house today to unpack and put away ahead of time. Now to make things very easy, I have created a checklist of everything we need so that we stay organized and don't overlook anything. The contents can be divided into six categories. Household, kitchen and food, linen, pets or babies or special needs, etc. Unpacking items and finally personal items. I will leave you a link in the description box below to this downloadable checklist on my blog. First and foremost, of course, is kitchen and food. You will need to consider your dinner for that night, breakfast in the morning, and maybe also lunch. Now we will be having a takeaway dinner. I have pre-ordered Hainani's chicken rice for the family, and my daughter will be cooking and packing a vegetarian equivalent of that for herself and her granny. In the first box, I have the kitchen items. Okay, but first I want to give Zoe a toy. It's a new place and I hope to make her feel a little more at home. For the morning after, my parents like to have their breakfast by about 9am. So I have packed a pot for tea. Since I'll be making 6 to 7 cups of tea, this is a good sized pot. In here, I have also kept a scoop for my tea, some salt and pepper for eggs, and of course some oil to cook with. Then I also brought with me a pan to cook my eggs in. Then half a loaf of bread, butter and jam. I've also packed some brown sugar and my homemade tea bags. Of course with my blend of tea for a tea emergency, which we have quite often, we all need our tea. And each bag has enough leaves to make six cuppers. By using tea bags instead of loose tea leaves, it saves the sieving step and not having to carry a sieve. Then I added a small packet of hot cocoa my mom likes to have a little at night and of course I have to add a packet of UHD milk for my tea. This is a tetra pack and it doesn't need refrigeration until unsealed. Now my needs may be a little more than what you consider necessary but it's important for me to make the transition as easy as possible for my parents. I want to keep their routine as normal as possible. I have also added some ramen noodles into my stash. Now for the kitchen category, I have two types here. I have a stack of dishes, cups and cutlery over here. You can always use paper plates if you like, but I decided to take one set, picking a Corel set because it's super lightweight and durable. This set also comes with some small cups, which is perfect for our tea and we will be using it for drinking water. We have filtered water here, but if you don't, you might want to bring along a couple of litres of drinking water as well. And I added a whole set of fork spoons and a few butter knives. The last couple of items in here are for Zoe. We have two bowls here, also vitriol. These are just a dollar at the IKEA and they're multifunctional. One is for her water and the other for her food. I also got a few packets of food for her. She will have to manage without her homemade porridge for a day or two, or at least until we unpack the rest of her belongings. The next box has all our household items. Right on top here, I place this chiller bag. This is especially handy if you don't have a running refrigerator yet, so I highly recommend it. For toiletries, you will of course need some loo rolls and tissue boxes. And I just brought along a couple for the first day. And here, I also have some hand wash soap. I have just taken a refill pack and divided it into four bottles, one for each bathroom. And next, these are some washing up items. Since I'm doing some cooking and we are using actual plates and cutlery, I will need dishwashing liquid and a sponge. 
If you're only using paper plates, you can probably skip this, but it's a great thing to have on hand. And I also have a few plastic bags for disposing of garbage. I have gone a step further and also packed some detergent and softener for the washing machine. This is just in case I need to do any urgent washing. It might be possible that our unpacking is delayed by a day and we can just wash what we wore during the day. This is the advantage of having a two-in-one washer and dryer. You can do the whole cycle overnight without having to rotate the laundry. And while we are each packing ourselves towels, I did pack a couple of extra towels in case anyone forgets or needs a spare. Along with that, I also have a kitchen rag for any spills. I have also added some pee mats for Zoe as she will need to be retrained in this new environment. And this is just a small box with some medication. I'm keeping some antihistamines in here along with Advil, um, some daily medication and supplements for Paul, me and my parents. I'm also keeping handy some melatonin, which is generally used for jet lag. Since it's a new place with different pillows, mattresses and the environment, I thought keeping this on hand might be a good idea for us, especially for my mom. And something I learned from moving a number of times in the past few years, which is to have all your unpacking tools in your first day box as well. I have a pen knife to open the boxes, a screwdriver in case I need to move a shelf or unscrew something, and my trusted measuring tape, and I also have a clipboard with some post-its. Now the last category is linen. You will need clean sheets after a long day's work to get some rest on. So this box has sheets for each bed, and we also have some extra flannel blankets in here. If the house doesn't have pillows, you will definitely want to bring along at least one per person. Now let's take a look at the checklist again. Each category has a guideline of items you might want to consider for your first day box. This is of course tailored to my family's needs and you can of course create your own list. Now in addition to this, each of us also has a personal checklist. Each of us will be packing a set of clothes, nightwear, underwear and of course toothbrush, toothpaste, face wash and such. Basically you're packing in the same way you would for a weekend away without the frills. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put some of the items away now and set up the house a bit for our first day. As mentioned, you can download the checklist for my blog. The link is in the description box below. I want to thank you all for going on this journey with me. If you have any ideas for something that should be in the first day box, do let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Until the next video, this is Ravina saying, Happy homemaking.